Okay, this video is going to be about um, making soap from um, triacylglycerides. But before we do that, we need to talk about um, acid and alkaline hydrolysis of esters. Okay, so um, first of all, this word hydrolysis, what does it mean? It means splitting with water. Oh, splitting by water okay so if we've got an ester let's let's talk about so we've got an ester uh, so you've got methyl ethanoate uh, if we react that with with water uh, we're going to get now the the first step in the mechanism which um, it will be a nucleophilic addition elimination, but the first step in the mechanism is going to be um, the lone pair on that is going to attack the carbonyl compound. That what the first step in the mechanism will be. We won't worry about that too much. Just a minute. Uh, we're going to get ethanoic acid and um, ethanoic acid. I suppose I should really do that OH in, in red to show where it's come from, because it's come from the water. And you're gonna get methanol. Uh, CH3O, and I'm gonna do that H in red, because that's come from the water as well. Okay, and I should really get rid of this arrow and turn it into an equilibrium sign, uh, because this is an equilibrium reaction the nucleophilic addition elimination can occur in the backwards direction as well. So that's going to go from there onto there. Okay, so esters will react with water, but um, it is a very slow rate of reaction and you need to use an acid catalyst really, okay. An acid catalyst. Um, so a few drops of conch sulfuric acid uh, to speed that reaction up. But you'll get a poor yield uh, because why would we get a poor yield? You can see it's an equilibrium reaction, so it's not going to go to completion. So it's not a very good way of hydrolyzing an ester. Incidentally, how does this acid catalyst work? Well, it works. <coughs> how does it catalyze it? Well, um, what it will do is, um, there's your ester. And you're relying on this carbon being delta positive and the water molecule to attack that. Well, if you've got, S, if you've got acid present, the H plus, one of the lone pairs on the oxygen will form a dated bond to the H plus. So that means that oxygen is positively charged, which of course is going to make this much more delta positive. It's going to be a much more, <clears throat> much better target for the nucleophilic attack by the water. Um, you don't need to know <coughs> how that works, but that's how the acid catalyst does work. But <coughs> it's not, it's a very poor yield because it is in equilibrium. So rather than using, using um, acid catalyzed hydrolysis, we're going to use, um, if you want a good yield, you use alkaline hydrolysis. Now the, uh, this is where um, the use of the word hydrolysis here is not strictly speaking correct, is it? Because, as we'll see, you don't get um, the water splitting up the ester. It's actually, it's not um, H2O that attacks. It's actually the OH minus ion. Okay, so the, um, but it is, it still counts as hydrolysis, but as I say, strictly speaking, it's not the water that's reacting. So let's just see what will happen there. So we're going to get, just move this up a bit. Um, we're going to have the ester. We're going to have OH minus. Of course, you'll have a sodium ion there as well, which would be a spectator. 
Okay, what's the first step in the mechanism? Well, that OH minus is going to attack the delta positive carbon here, yeah? And that's going to be much better at doing it than water. It's going to be a much better nucleophile than water up here, isn't it? Because um, <clears throat> that's negatively charged and water hasn't got an overall negative charge. So what happens then is, as I said, we're not really worried about the mechanism, but you get, you'll get the carboxylic acid, but you're not going to get that because you've got OH minus, haven't you? So whenever you've got OH minus around, that's going to remove that H. Um, and so you're not going to get the carboxylic acid. You're going to get the ion, or if you like, the carboxylic acid salt. Okay, so that's ethanoate ion. Ethanoate ion. And... Um, you are uh, you're going to get methanol as well, CH3. Oh, and the H on the methanol is going to come from the OH minus. So, and I'm going to leave this arrow here as a. Um, it is it is not an equilibrium reaction. It goes to completion, and you get a much better yield. Okay, so that's uh, acid hydrolysis and alkaline hydrolysis of uh, acid catalyzed hydrolysis and alkaline hydrolysis of uh, an ester. Now, when you have, um, when you make soap, what you're doing is you're doing alkaline hydrolysis of the triacyl glyceride. Okay, so I will now draw another uh, triacyl glyceride and hopefully you will have drawn a load of these because if you don't draw it you won't remember it the structure but once you've drawn it a few times it will be very firmly lodged in your brain um, but without drawing it it won't be right so you have this is from the um the propane uh, the propane one two three trial so you have three oxygens there that's going to be so Two hydrogens there, hydrogen there. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have the carboxylic acids. Right, I'm going to just write that down as R1, okay? And don't forget, what is R1 going to be? Well, it's going to be fatty acids these are fatty acids so it's going to be quite long isn't it it's going to be you know r2 and r3 so those three fatty acids don't have to be the same these are the fatty acid bits here that that and that they've come from the fatty acids okay um so <clears throat> we're going to react that with sodium hydroxide And it would have to be three sodium hydroxide because you need three OH minus ions. Each OH, one OH minus here is needed to break um, one ester linkage. Um, and so we're going to get, well, we're going to get our propane one, two, three triol. It's just, while I'm writing this down, it just struck me out in an early video. I think I wrote this formula incorrectly because I put, I think I put a CH, I said that was H3C, but you'll forgive me for making a little mistake there. It just struck me, struck me. I was doing that one yesterday. Um, so there's your propane one, two, three trial. And by the way, you do need that E there. In all the mark schemes, it was underlined that. If you wrote propan one, two, three trial, you get the answer wrong. It's got to be propane. Um, and you're going to get your three carboxylic acids. But it won't be the carboxylic acid, will it? It will be, as we saw here, it will be the negative ion of the carboxylic acids. Yeah. So the three carboxylic acids are going to be the negative ions. R1, so that's an alkyl group. It's going to be 
probably 17 long or 15 long you know, because remember always the carboxylic acids also have an even number and that's going to be r minus and then you're going to have r2 for the second one o minus and r3 now this mixture so that's balanced and also you're gonna get three sodium ions and a pluses they are spectate ions they don't do anything so this mixture of the salt of the salts of the fatty acids is what soap is this mixture is it's soap these molecules have detergent like properties I think I remember on the last video, do you remember why we said is because these these groups R1, R2, and R3 are pretty long, like CH2 chains. They're very hydrophobic and they will dissolve in the fatty part. And whereas this end here, uh, this end of the molecules that is hydro, because it's charged and because it's got oxygen from hydrogen bonds with the oxygen so on. Um, that's going to be hydrophilic. Okay, so that's going to stick out. Okay, and do you remember just to re I can't run do that anymore. Or can I undo it? Yeah, I can. Right. Uh, just to remind you that um, you you get you know you get your blob of fat. So this is going to be my blob of fat here, and sticking in there are these molecules. I've drawn the little head that is the the negatively this this end here that's the head yeah and the tail is the long ch2 chain there for like that okay and you form these little they're called micelles i think um and the fat is dispersed in the water that's how the soap works it's got detergent like properties so <clears throat> that is the um how soap is made and there is a, a practical which you might do. Um, um, you can make soap. Well, to make soap, all you do is you get um, you get some um, oil, like olive oil or something. What, what works best is actually castor oil. Um, and you see so you get the oil, which is a triacylglyceride, and you boil with five mole per decimeter cubed. Um, Five mole per decimeter cubed NaOH, and the oil gradually turns into pieces into soap. Um, um, you might not do it. Some I don't really like doing it very much because it's five mole per decimeter cubed NaOH. It's really strong. Uh, it makes a mess of all the glassware, and it's very corrosive, and it's it's being boiled up, boiling up really strong alkali. It's not really very nice. Um, so that's how you make soap. And I say, by the way, castor oil. This is actually quite interesting. Castor oil works much better than if you use olive oil. And I wonder why this was. And then I looked up um, what uh, the fatty acids in castor oil are. As and you'll find, so a normal fatty acid would be like this. And then on the end, you've got your, um, your carboxylic acid group. Well, with castor oil, then the, the normal fatty acid is just CH2, CH2, CH2. Maybe you have a double bond in there somewhere. But with um, with castor oil, you have quite a lot of OH groups sticking off the sides. Okay, and that makes it mix with the aqueous NaOH better. Uh, it can mix with it better, so it reacts quicker, and you know the soap gets made within like about five minutes of boiling it with castor oil. And sometimes with the other ones, you have to boil it for a couple of hours or something, which is you want to get it done in less and it's not that good so that i think that's why castor oil works better because it's got these hydrophilic oh groups on the fatty acids which make up the the triacylglyceride anyway that's just besides the point really okay so then that's the end of that video